Hi, my name is Mama Suku Banyande. I am originally from Sierra Leone and I migrated to Australia in 2004. When it came to the COVID pandemic and how it impacted the African community here, there was a lot of confusion because a lot of us didn't really believe that the virus was going to affect us directly. So one of the biggest misinformation had to be people believing that it was a white virus, so black people were immune to it. That was a big thing for us and we thought we had won the ticket. There was this big thing about drinking um, brown liquor and you'll be fine if you were taking a lot of that. So we had to let people understand that just drinking alcohol is not going to make you immune to the virus. It was majority of the young people knew what was going on. It was now relaying that information to the older people in the communities. So this was now led to um, various African leaders having to translate that into different languages to ensure that the information was been delivered accurately. But also what a lot of young people started doing was um, being the middle person with information to ensuring that their family members or cousins or other community members were also receiving this communication to ensure that we were abiding by the new laws and restrictions that the government had placed. So the action that we took is I just sent out a random message on Instagram and had a few um, young people in the community reach out to me and say they were interested in being the middle person to relay information, also probably do a few grocery shopping for the aunties and the elders in the community who would not who did not feel comfortable to leave the house. So um, what we were able to do was just pick out what we knew to be true and be able to translate that within the community. So this was coordinated through the power of social media. It's incredibly powerful. So social media and Zoom was fantastic and also doing a few FaceTime conversations and calling aunties um, on the phone as well to ensure that we were relaying that information because we did not want to have contacts with elderly people knowing that we were more likely to survive the virus than they were. So we avoided that con contact um, when we were dropping groceries. So it was a lot of phone conversations, letting them know that, oh, we've dropped your groceries outside. You can come and pick it up when you're ready and ensure that they had hand sanitizers and wipes as well to um, make sure everything was properly cleaned before they accessed it. This is the first time a virus of this has happened within our country. So the information that was being relayed was majority in English. And now for that to be translated into various different languages was very difficult. So if you don't have somebody who speaks fluent English in your family and within your home structure, how are you going to relay that information to your relatives or your elders in your families if you yourself can't speak English properly? I think that's why a lot of young people decided to come together since we've been fortunate enough to grow up here. We recognize the privileges that we have that our relatives did and to ensure that we were relaying and translating that information accurately. For those of us who've been fortunate enough to grow up here, we tend to forget that our parents and even our grandparents have the same dreams that we have, which is to ensure that we have safety and we're able to provide for our family. I totally forgot that there was that network or even that connection. I just thought our parents were just nagging 24 seven and put unnecessary pressure on us. But it was really fantastic to see through several conversations to recognize that we all want the same thing. We may go about it differently. By the end of the day, the agenda and the goal was still the same and that's to ensure the safety of our families.